Example 2 asks us to find the outward flux of a vector field f across the surface of the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 9 for z greater than or equal to 0 less than or equal to 2, including its top and bottom disks. So your surface s is actually comprised of three pieces. You have your circular cylinder, we'll call that s1 which has the equation x squared plus y squared equals 9. And then you have surface 2, which is this cap along the bottom. And that's part of the plane z equals 0. And then you've got this surface 3, which is the cap along the top, which is part of the plane z equal 2. Therefore, your surface s is a closed surface. You're actually enclosing a region E in space, and we can use the divergence there. So if you were to calculate the surface integral of the vector field directly, you would have to calculate the surface integral over each of the pieces and add them all together. We did a problem fairly similar to this at the end of the video on surface integrals of vector fields. So please refer to that if you would like to see the surface integral or one very similar to this calculated directly. But since S is a closed surface, we can use the divergence here. And instead of calculating the surface integral directly, we do the triple integral of the divergence of the vector field over the region E enclosed by the surface. First off, the divergence of the vector field would be the partial derivative of the first component with respect to x. It's going to be z plus the partial derivative of the second component with respect to y. That will be z plus the partial derivative of the third component with respect to z. So altogether, we have 2z. Therefore, surface integral is the triple integral over E of 2z dv. Now, this is a triple integral like any other you calculated in Calc 3. You can calculate it directly doing x, y, or z first, depending upon the problem. Or you can switch to cylindrical coordinates, or you can switch to spherical coordinates, if appropriate. In this case, since our boundary is a circular cylinder, it would make sense to switch to cylindrical coordinates. And S1 in cylindrical coordinates is r squared equals 9 or r equals 3. So we have the triple integral of 2z dv in cylindrical coordinates is r dz dr d theta. z goes from 0 to 2, r goes from 0 to 3, and theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. If we look at the projection of our solid region onto the xy plane, it's going to be the interior of the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 9, or r equals 3. So just like in polar, r goes from 0 to 3, you want the whole circle, so theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Now it's just a matter of evaluating the triple integral. So we've got the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 3 of z squared r from 0 to 2 dr d theta. So we are going to have the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 3 of 4r dr d theta, or the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 2r squared from 0 to 3 d theta. So the integral from 0 to 2 pi of it looks like 18 d theta. It's going to be 18 theta from 0 to 2 pi, or 36 pi. And that's our final answer. Example 3 asks us to find the flux of F through the surface S, the cube with vertices plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1. So if we draw the cube to the best of our ability, our axes go right through the middle of this guy. So that, for instance, is the point 1, 1, 1. We're asked to find the flux through S. So the flux is equal to the surface integral over S of the vector field. Now, S in this case is this cube, so it's actually made up of six pieces corresponding to the six sides. So if you were to calculate the surface integral directly, you would actually have to calculate six surface integrals and add them together. But luckily for us, the divergence theorem says instead we can do the triple integral over the solid region bounded by the cube 
of the divergence of the vector field. Now you may say, what about the orientation? You're not told to define the outward flexor that as the surface has an outward orientation. But with closed surfaces, you can assume, even if it's not specified, that you're talking about an outward or positive orientation for the surface. That's always the default unless you're told otherwise for closed surfaces. So in this case, the divergence of the vector field is going to be the partial derivative of the first component of f or x with respect to x, which is 1, partial derivative of the second component or 2y with respect to y, which is 2, plus the partial derivative of the, the third component with respect to z or 3. So the divergence of f is just equal to 6. So flux is going to be the triple integral of 6 over the solid region E bounded by your surface S. Now you can integrate with respect to x, y, or z first. It doesn't really matter. So for instance, you could write this as 6 dz dy dx, where z goes from minus 1 to 1, as does y, as does x. However, it might be a little faster if you notice that this is 6 times the triple integral over E of 1 dV, or 6 times the volume of E. So in that case, you've got 6. The length of each of the sides is 2. So 6 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 48. And that's your final answer. Example 4 says use the divergence theorem to evaluate the surface integral of the vector field f, where s is the boundary of the solid formed by z equals the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared, z equals the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared, and z equals 0. And your vector field f is given as the first component's x cubed plus y sine z, the second component's y cubed plus z sine x, and the third component's 3x. So let's give ourselves some axes here. So our surface is actually made up of multiple pieces. The first is this z equals the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. That's actually a hemisphere, the top half of a sphere. The second surface is z equals the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. So the second surface is a hemisphere, the top half of a sphere, radius 1, centered at the origin. And then on bottom, you're bounded by part of the xy plane, or z equals 0. So this flat donut region in the xy plane, between where the spheres intersect the xy plane, is part of z equals 0, or is the cap on the bottom. So your outer sphere is the part of x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4, where z is greater than or equal to 0. And your inner sphere, this red sphere, is the part of x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1, the part where z is greater than or equal to 0. And then you're bounded below by this flat donut region, which is part of z equals 0, the xy plane. Now we're using the divergence theorem to evaluate the surface integral of the vector field. Again, if you're going to do this directly, the surface is actually comprised of three pieces. But since we were talking about a closed surface, we're enclosing this region in space. Think about this as being an orange where you dig out the middle of it. And so we're integrating over, say, the orange rind where we've taken a circular chunk out of the middle of half of our orange. So we have a closed surface, so we can use the divergence theorem, and the surface integral is going to be the triple integral over the solid region bounded by that surface of the divergence of the vector field. Again, we can assume, even though it's not specified, that we're talking about an outward or positive orientation on the surface. That's the default for closed surfaces. So we need to calculate the divergence of the vector field. It's going to be the partial derivative of the first component with respect to x is 3x squared. The partial derivative of the second component with respect to y is 3y squared plus 0. And the partial derivative of the third component with respect to z is just 0. So the surface integral will be the triple integral over e of 3x squared plus 3y squared.
dv. Once we evaluate the triple integral, remember we can switch to cylindrical or spherical coordinates if it's more convenient. In this case, our surface is comprised of spheres, so it might be nice to switch to spherical coordinates. The outer sphere in spherical coordinates is rho squared equals 4, rho equals 2, and the inner sphere in spherical coordinates is rho squared equals 1, or rho equals 1. So this is equal to, we've got 3, and x in spherical is rho sine phi cosine theta, quantity squared, plus 3, y in spherical is rho sine phi sine theta, quantity squared, dv in spherical is rho squared sine phi, and then we have d rho d phi d theta. Rho is going from, if we imagine a ray going up diagonally through the middle of our solid region, it enters on rho equals 1, it enters on the outer sphere rho equals 2. If we think about the angles that ray can make with the positive z-axis, it can go all the way from 0 to pi over 2. And then if you look at the projection down onto the xy plane, it's going to be that donut region. Theta is the angle from polar coordinates. So the angle that rays in that projected region in the xy plane would make with the positive x-axis. And since we want the whole circle in the donut region, theta would go from 0 to 2 pi. Now we just need to simplify and integrate this. So our surface integral is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi over 2, the integral from 1 to 2 of, we had 3, and then we had rho squared sine squared phi. And if we factor it out, this is times the quantity cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Then from dv, we still have rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. So this is going to equal the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi over 2, the integral from 1 to 2. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is, of course, 1. So we've got 3 rho to the fourth sine cubed phi d rho d phi d theta. Now that we've simplified, we can start integrating. This is the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 3 rho to the fifth over 5 sine cubed phi from 1 to 2 d phi d theta. This is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi over 2, so 93 fifths sine cubed phi d phi d theta. The next step is to integrate sine cubed phi, and we do that using a trick substitution. So this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 93 fifths, and we write it as sine squared phi times sine phi d phi d theta. Why we do that is because we can rewrite sine squared phi as well cosine squared phi plus sine squared phi equals 1. So sine squared phi would be 1 minus cosine squared phi. Anytime you're integrating sine or cosine by themselves raised to an odd power, you use this trig substitution. So we would write it as the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 minus cosine squared phi times sine phi d phi d theta. The reason we do that is we can then do a u substitution. We can let u be cosine phi, so du is minus sine phi d phi. And we can integrate. So this would be the integral. I'm going to clear off some room here, erase my note. This would be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 93 fifths. And we'd have well, the antiderivative of sine phi is minus cosine phi, and the antiderivative for minus cosine squared phi times sine phi using my u substitution would be cosine cubed phi over 3. And I'm going to put in my bounds, 0 to pi over 2. 
So if I evaluate my at my bounds, this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 93 fifths times 0, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, minus 93 fifths times, well, cosine of 0 is 1, so we've got minus 1 plus 1 third d theta. Therefore, we've got the integral from 0 to 2 pi of it looks like, so we've got 93 fifths times 2 thirds d theta. So let's see, that's going to be 31 times 2. 31 times 2 is 62 over 5 theta from 0 to 2 pi. So that's going to be 62 times 2 pi. That's 124 pi over 5. And that's my final answer. If you're just told to set this up, you could stop here. You just have to get it to the point where you can integrate it in terms of one of the coordinate systems. Example 5, we're asked to find the inward flux where S is the surface of the tetrahedron bounded by the planes x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0, and x plus 2y plus z equal 2. So that's going to intersect the x-axis at 2, the y-axis, or the z-axis rather at 2, excuse me, and the y-axis at 1. So my surface here is actually made up of four separate pieces. This front piece I have colored in is part of our plane x plus 2y plus z equal 2. The back is part of the plane x equals 0. The left side is part of the plane y equals 0. And the bottom is part of the plane z equals 0. So I'm asked to find the inward flux. So that's going to be the surface integral over S, which if you calculate it directly, by the way, would comprise four separate surface integrals. So instead, what I want to do is find a way to use the divergence theorem. Now we have to be careful here because we're asked to find the inward flux. So the divergence theorem applies directly to the outward flux, or an outward-oriented surface. So if S were outward-oriented, let's call it S out, then the surface integral over a closed surface is equal to the triple integral over the solid region bounded by the surface of the divergence of F. But we want S to be what we're given, which is an inward-oriented surface. Well, I can find the corresponding surface integral where S is inward-oriented by just multiplying by a negative 1. It just changes the orientation of all those unit normals. So minus the surface integral of S out of your vector field or minus the triple integral over E of the divergence of the vector field is equivalent to our surface integral where we have the inward orientation. So therefore, if we want to find flux, it's going to be minus the triple integral over E of the divergence of the vector field. In this case, the divergence of my vector field is going to be, well, it looks like we've got 2xy plus 2xy plus 2xy, or just 6xy. So therefore, flux is going to be minus the triple integral of 6xy. In this case, I would stick with rectangular coordinates and integrate with respect to z first. So z is going to, if you imagine a ray coming up through the middle of your solid, it would enter on the plane z equals 0, and it would exit on this plane, which is z equals 2 minus x minus 2y. So to find the x and y bounds, we look at the projection on the xy plane. It's bounded by a piece of the x-axis, a piece of the y-axis, and this line of intersection where the, your plane x plus 2y plus z equal 2 intersects z equals 0. So it's this triangular region here. That's bounded by part of the x-axis, part of the y-axis, and where 0 equals 2 minus x minus 2y or x equals 2 minus 2y. So if I do x next, x goes from 0 to 2 minus 2y. And finally, then y goes from 0 to 1. 
Now, if you're just asked to set the integral up, you can stop here, but we're asked to calculate it, so we've got a little bit of work to do. To find the inward flux, we now need to calculate the negative of the triple integral of 6xy dz dx dy, where z is going from 0 to 2 minus x minus 2y, where x is going from 0 to 2 minus 2y, and where y is going from 0 to 1. We're going to calculate it directly, starting with z. So this is going to be equal to minus the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from 0 to 2 minus 2y of 6xyz. And we're going to put in the bounds, so 0 to 2 minus x minus 2y dx dy. Or this is going to be minus the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from 0 to 2 minus 2y of 6xy times the quantity 2 minus x minus 2y. We still have dx dy. So this is going to give us minus the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from 0 to 2 minus 2y, 12xy minus 6 x squared y minus 12 x y squared dx dy. And now we're going to integrate with respect to x. So we'll have minus the integral from 0 to 1 of 6 x squared y minus 2 x cubed y minus that's going to be 6x squared y squared from 0 to 2 minus 2y dy. Or this is going to equal minus the integral from 0 to 1 of 6 times the quantity 2 minus 2y squared times y minus 2 times the quantity 2 minus 2y cubed times y minus 6 times the quantity 2 minus 2y squared times y squared dy. Now if we multiply this out and combine like terms, we should get to minus the integral from 0 to 1 of 8y minus 24y squared plus 24y cubed minus 8y to the fourth dy. And if we integrate with respect to y, this is going to be minus, and we'll have 4y squared minus 8y cubed plus 6y to the fourth minus 8 fifths y to the fifth we plug in the bounds, that goes from 0 to 1. Where this is minus, let's see, we have 4 minus 8 plus 6, so 2 minus 8 fifths. That is negative 2 fifths. And that's our final answer.